join me in welcoming Mike Turpin, the best speaker I've ever heard, and should have been governor. Strike up the band, clang the cymbals, beat the drums. Um, thanks for being in Oklahoma. Uh, hear me now, believe me later, we're glad you're here. And uh, we really are. And you've been here before. I read a little bit. You've been here in the 60s, the 90s, actually back in the 40s, believe it or not, folks. This is the fourth time you've met in Oklahoma, in the 40s, the 60s, and the 90s. So thanks for coming back, and welcome to our great state. And I like to tell everybody Oklahoma is the state of soil, oil, and toil. <laughs> soil, oil, and toil. Obviously, that means farming and ranching, oil and gas, and just plain old hard work. So our motto around here is, particularly today, is TGIM. Thank goodness it's Monday. I mean, that's Oklahoma. We get up and we want to make something happen. You don't grind, you don't shine. That's Oklahoma. <laughs> you want to be laborious? No. It, it's all about the work ethic. So the one-liner goes this way. And you got to be laborious before you can be glorious. You got to be laborious before you can be glorious. You got to work hard. And that's why I'm so proud of hosting this convention in Oklahoma. I'm so proud of the governor for being here this morning. Governor Mary Fallon, our first woman governor. She's been our governor for eight years. She believes strongly in aviation, aeronautics, aerospace, all that. She's been a great proponent for us. And when Vic pulled this conference, recruited you to come to Oklahoma, she's the first one to stand up and say, I'll be there. So our governor was here this morning, and her right-hand person on all things aviation-related, aeronautics-related, aerospace-related, is your friend, my friend, the one and only Vic Bird. Oh my gosh. And no, it's true. It's true. You've been a right hand man on all that. So a round of applause, whether you really like him or not, for Vic Bird. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. You gotta look. As we'd say in Muskogee, Oklahoma, the guy is friendly as a wet dog, you know? And uh, that, that's a no no that's, that's a compliment. So where, where I'm going with this. Is, is where I'm going with this is, is fairly serious. Is uh, so soil, oil, and toil, but that's not all. I mean, I like to think we can lay claim to soil, oil, toil, and a certain amount of aviation, aerospace achievement in this state. And I mean that sincerely. When you just think about our airports, Will Rogers, Wiley Post, Clyde Cessna. I mean, you've already heard from. Our, which, who they heard from? Our, our uh, astronauts? Stafford. Okay, Tom Stafford, Gordon Cooper, you know, he's... Well, I didn't hear from him. I know, I know, I know. But we're all proud around here of the Air Logistics Center at Tinker. We're all proud of the FAA presence here. We're all proud of American Airlines over in Tulsa, our incredible maintenance center over there. So we got some aerospace credentials, and we're proud of it in Oklahoma, and we're proud that you're here. And I want to make it personal, though, because I, I won the school science fair back in the sixth grade. And uh, it, it was on rocket propulsion, swear to God. It was, it was yeah, yeah, I was ahead of my time. It, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 I'm telling this story, Vic. I mean, I mean, okay. Solid, solid propulsion, liquid propulsion. You know, I mean, I was really, really into it big time. So I was so excited about it. I'm going way back on you folks. This is over in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I win. I win it all. So they say, that guy's got to meet Werner Von Braun. And swear to God, Werner Von Braun was in Tulsa in 1961. For those that weren't alive, I'm telling you it happened. For those that are alive, and does anybody remember Werner Von Braun? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a book. It's not a bestseller. But it's got a picture of Warner Vaughn Braun and I together. And you're one of the few crowds I've ever talked to that would think that was kind of a big deal. I mean, it, 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 it's Warner Vaughn Braun because I won the school science fair on rocketry. So now I'm talking to Warner Vaughn Braun in Tulsa. Peaceful Uses of Outer Space was the name of the conference. Robert S. Kerr was our senator. He invited Vaughn Braun in. And so we had a great 
He asked me all about my science fair project, liquid propulsion, solid propulsion. I was all over it. And I asked him, how's the space race going? The space race against the Soviets and all that. He goes, we've overcome gravity, but the paperwork is killing us. <laughs> Werner von Braun. Isn't that beautiful? And you know what he's talking about. For Werner von Braun, gravity was nothing but paperwork. Golly, you know. Where's, where's Jim Bryan's time when we need him? I mean, NASA, was that was part of the challenge. Exciting times. And that was one of the most interesting meetings I'd ever had in my life, was meeting Werner von Braun. I mean that uh, very sincerely. And I still remember my dad, folks, for the, some of the older people in the room I'm looking around, I still remember my dad at dinner going, oh my God, the Russians just beat us into space with Sputnik 1. They had the first satellite, folks. And then we had to turn von Braun loose for Explorer 1, and then Alan Shepard, suborbital, John Glenn, orbital, and then the Saturn rocket, I mean, all the way to the moon. Werner von Braun. Okay, so all that being said, I gotta tell you just a little bit about my great state because we were talking here at the lunch table and um, I've been the chair of the board for the last two years at the bombing memorial, a couple of blocks from here. So I want you to get over there if you can. You're gonna have some time. And it's an uplifting experience. But about 23 years ago, the bomb went off in Oklahoma City. There's a brand new book out called Boomtown by Sam Anderson, Boomtown. And it's a brand new book in the last month. And it's all about two things in Oklahoma City, as much as anything. And it's all about the bombing in Oklahoma City 23 years ago and how we reacted to the bombing. Oklahoma City 23 years ago when the bomb went off, almost 24 years ago, we turned our darkest hour into our finest hour based on how the city pulled together, came together. We responded. We call that the Oklahoma Standard, how we responded and pulled together. Bill Clinton was the president, then he came in and said, Oklahoma City, you broke our hearts, but you lifted our spirits. So the book ends on the Oklahoma City Renaissance, they talk about in this book, is the bombing 23, almost 24 years ago, a couple of blocks from here. If you get over there, it's sacred ground. It's all about recovery, resilience, and renaissance. Think of those words, recovery, resilience, and renaissance, the renaissance in Oklahoma City. So what's happened in Oklahoma City is the bomb went off 20, almost 24 years ago, and the Thunder, the basketball team, the Thunder came to town 10 years ago. Between the bombing and the Thunder coming to this city was maps one, two, and three, which were bond issues that rebuilt the city and made it what it is today. And Chambers come from all over to see Oklahoma City and say, how'd you pull that off? And this book's kind of all about that as well. And Sam Presti's the general manager of the Thunder. He takes every Thunder player through the bombing memorial and says, this is sacred ground. This is the heart and soul of Oklahoma City. This is the city, the people that you're playing for. So we're proud to have the Thunder, and we're kind of the NBA Green Bay Packers. Think about that. We're, we're almost a Green Bay of the NBA as opposed to the NFL. Small town, big team. And for 10 years, haven't had an empty seat at a game. That's me bragging a little bit about the city you have chose to have your convention in and to have come to visit. So a little bit about Oklahoma City and Oklahoma. Proud to be here and proud of my city. OK, Vic invited me to speak. I appreciated the opportunity. So I wanted to give you, besides what we've already talked about, there's some prepared remarks now on what I'm going to call a little bit of sooner philosophy. Sooner philosophy. See if it applies to your life. It may, it may not. Not sure, we'll see, but I got some props. Okay? I brought a prop from my office. It's a carpenter's level. Okay? So what in the world? What do you do to achieve balance in your life? And because I'm talking to an aviation crowd, get ready, I brought a gyroscope. Yeah, thank you. The man from Alabama, thank you. Because only an aviation crowd would know what we put in the nose cone of rockets that Warner Von Braun built for this country. So, balance in your life, a carpenter's level could remind you of that, as could a gyroscope. I've lived an extraordinary life, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm gonna reflect on some life philosophy. We've got a little time here. And the way I've got it figured is balance in my life is largely determined by this life philosophy I've created, dealt with, philosophized over, 
A funny bone, a backbone, and a wishbone. A funny bone's a sense of humor, a backbone's a sense of courage, and a wishbone's a sense of idealism. So bear with me. A funny bone, a sense of humor. Will Rogers said humor is a passport to the heart. It's the greatest common denominator among all people in all times and all places. A sense of humor. I'm a Rotarian. Rotary Magazine has, there's a crying need for laughter in America today. Why? Just to keep it in proper perspective. Everything. Everything in the world. Everything in the world of politics, the world of spirituality, the world of where you live. Your walk in life. Your particular walk in life. Got to have a funny bone. Sense of humor. So, let's see if I can be funny. On purpose. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Oklahoma has a rich history. In Boomtown, he talks about how we settled our state. Oklahoma, 1907 was statehood. 2007, that's how young we are. Our centennial was 2007. So, so we settled this territory right here about 100 plus years ago with a series of land runs. Boomers and Sooners. Sooners crossed the line too soon, that sort of thing. That's why we're called Sooners. <laughs> yeah, seriously, we're a bunch of scandals and outlaws. You know, you know that, that, that's the history of our state. So that's the premise for one of my first jokes. So my family came to Oklahoma in a covered wagon. If, if you'd have seen my family, you'd have known why the wagon was covered. You know, I'm thinking, okay, 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 okay. I, I, I spent $100 to research my family tree. Once I saw it, I spent $500 just to cover it up. It was, it was not pretty. My family was so poor. That's right. For breakfast, we ate popcorn. For lunch, we drank water. And for dinner, we just sat around and swelled up. I mean, we were a poor family. But we, we, got, we got by. We got by. Mm. Eventually, I went to high school. For those who know the demographics of Oklahoma in North Tulsa which I'm proud to say, McLean High School, the poor side of town. But in any event, what's the point? On the basketball team, they called me the Minute Man. I kept saying, Coach, can I play? He said, in a minute, man, just sit down and be quiet. <laughs> so, so I spent more time on the bench than, uh, than Judge Judy. You know, that's, 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 something like that, okay? So the good news is I was an honor student. <laughs> yes, Your Honor, no, Your Honor, I was in juvenile. <laughs> I was in juvenile court the whole time. That's the bad news. Okay. I went out for the track team. The track coach said, stay to the left and get back as soon as you can. And, uh, and I've done that pretty much, stay to the left. Okay, so in a lot of different ways. Okay, so recently I joined the Senior Senior Golf Tour. On the Senior Senior Golf Tour, you play three holes, and whoever remembers their score wins. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. So I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Okay, so I go off to college. And in college, they all knew I was going to be a lawyer. That's right. Because under my yearbook picture, it said incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. And everybody said, thank you. Everybody said, that guy's got to be a lawyer. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So the first thing I do is become a bankrupt. The first thing I do is become a bankruptcy attorney. But I took all of my cases on contingency. <laughs> thank you. For the non-lawyers in the room, that means if you win, you lose. And so, so my law partners had a real problem with that. I mean, so what I came up with is a business card that says, if I can't get you out of jail, I'll get in with you. So at least you got company. I mean, you see what I'm saying? So bear that in mind the next 48 hours here in Oklahoma City. If something, something bad happens, call me. Because the flip side of my card says, it's better to know the judge than it is to know the law. And I know both. Thank you. I mean, think about that. That's pretty cool. I'm at that point in my life where I know both. You know, know the judges, wrote the laws, that sort of thing. Okay, so eventually I got married. Susan and I have a perfect marriage. I don't try to run her life. And I don't try to run mine either. <laughs> So, so thank you. I mean, that's good advice, folks. She lets me have her way. I mean, she just tells me. She, thank you. She's the CEO of the Turpin household. She makes the trains run on time. In fact, we just got back from Canada where I told table number one here, I've been on the Rocky Mountaineer up in Canada on the railroad. It's 30th wedding anniversary. She said, we're going to go get on a train in Canada. And I just did what I was told, and I enjoyed every minute of it. i got to tell you. I, you know, I've been to Canada once or twice before, but this is a beautiful country. And uh, I spread a lot of goodwill, you know, because America needed some help up there. And I did what I could just to be, you know, just to, just, to, just, to, just to be a nice guy, you know. I mean, 
Nice guys can finish first. Don't ever forget that, folks. Character is destiny. There's a serious, there's a serious thought. Character is destiny. It's like a boomerang. What you throw out there, folks, it comes back to you. So uh, I'm a big believer in that. And uh, I'm sure you are too. That's part of uh, my gyroscope and my balancing thing with the, you know, we've got to have some balance in our lives. We've got to figure out what means a lot to us. So anyway, so we raised three teenagers. They're older than that now. But uh, once you help three teenagers, once you help raise three teenagers, you know why alligators eat their young. I mean, it, that, it was very hard. I, I, I got to keep moving here, but I can't help but telling you this is re this has really helped make my, my marriage work. 30 years, folks. Crisscrossing Canada in a train. I mean, come on. <laughs> Five three word phrases. Five three word phrases every man should use to ensure matrimonial bliss. This is free legal advice, and I am a lawyer. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, of sorts. Okay, so, so, five three-word phrases every man should use to ensure matrimonial bliss. This is Mike to Susan, Mike to my wife. Five three-word phrases every man should use to ensure matrimonial bliss. Number one, I love you. Number two, you look beautiful. Number three, let's eat out. <laughs> that works. Yeah, yeah, that works. Number four, can I help? And number five, number five, it's my fault. Five, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, five three-word phrases. Thank you. Yeah, plenty more. We're on a train in Canada. I mean, it all worked out 30 years later. In fact, I brought a book here. That now's as good as time as it. Fly Girls. How five daring women defied all odds and made aviation history. You can guess who they are, some of them at least. But maybe not all of them. It's brand new. It just came out, folks. And, and I've enjoyed the read. And uh, I want to tell you about it because I believe in strong women. Because I've already told you about my wife. She's the CEO of the Turpin Household. I got daughters in law school at the University of Oklahoma right now. I look at the world through my daughter's eyes. The best thing to happen for women in this civilization is for men to have daughters. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> so when I look at the world through my daughter's eyes, I appreciate every woman in this room that's built a bridge and knocked down a barrier for Sarah Elise Turpin. Thank you, ladies, for being who you are and what you do. Well, this book's all about that. This book's all about women in your industry. And um, it's a great read. It's all about risk. It's all about the greater the risk, the greater the reward. And um, I find it to be very inspirational. So it's another great book about the aviation industry. And uh, get it as soon as you can. Because uh, you guys are an equal opportunity employer. Right? Men and women and everybody else. That's what that book's all about. You know, if you got courage and you're willing to take a chance, as you said, Vic, well ago, John Wayne said, courage is being scared, but saddling up anyway. And that's where we all are in our life. Every once in a while, it just comes down to taking a chance. That's what the book's all about. In any event, okay, I said, a funny bone's a sense of humor, a back bone's a sense of courage. Let me, let me do that just for a second. A sense of courage, the courage to do what you believe is right, right? I mean, it's always the right time to do the right thing. I teach a Sunday school class and I teach the young people there that if you have the courage to do what you believe is right, you get a reward for it. And you know what the reward is? Self-respect. You can be alone without being lonely even on a Saturday night. Self-respect. I teach young people that. Just if you have the courage to do what you believe is right, you get a reward. Self-respect. You feel good about who you are. You can be alone without being lonely. Mm -mm -mm. But here's the fun one. The courage to break the silence of a room with the sound of your voice. The courage to break the silence of a room with the sound of your voice when was the last time you had to do that. We all do in different contexts, right? And so where I am on that is go see The Darkest Hour, the last movie, the best movie so far. There'll be more about Winston Churchill, The Darkest Hour. In that movie, they talk all about JFK, our president, saying Winston Churchill mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. Winston Churchill mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. If the British Empire lasts for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. Winston Churchill. To emancipate this world from the stranglehold of Adolf Hitler. Mm. Words matter. Words matter. I argued in front of the United States Supreme Court. Got to do that. So I'm, I'm just telling you, I didn't go up there unprepared. I decided that words matter. So I had a theme. So anytime you get up and break the silence of the room with the sound of your voice, you've got to have a theme. I mean, you got to have a little bit of soil, oil, and toil, a funny bone, backbone, wishbone. I mean, something, you know, a guidepost along the way to where you know what you want to accomplish in the, your own remarks. <coughs> Men
Mr. Chief Justice, my name is Mike Turpin. I'm the Attorney General of the State of Oklahoma. I'm here to advocate for the Reverend Richard Douglas and his wife Marilyn. They're dead, they're gone, they're murdered. Their eyes are closed, their lips are silenced. They couldn't be here today to speak for themselves. I'm here to make sure they don't become forgotten people in the criminal justice process. Forgotten people. That was my theme. Got to have a theme. So what's your theme when you go back home? Well, I can't help it, you know, but to suggest from Kitty Hawk to Cape Canaveral, new ideas create new realities. Not bad, you know. I mean, <laughs> you, know, we, you don't even got to get a PR firm. I mean, it's, yeah, I'm not being paid anything to be here. It's all just free advice, man. <laughs> Words matter. Words matter. Uh, how about this? To see the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. To hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. When was the last time you held infinity in the palm of your hand? Powerful words by a poet. I'd say maybe when I fell in love with my wife and when a child was born, our first child. But I'm back to this, back to my book here. Fly girls, I guarantee you, they held infinity in the palm of their hand. Every time they, I'm not just talking about Amelia, Mary, Mary, Amelia Earhart here. We're talking about five different women, so I keep promoting the book. But it was all about holding infinity in the palm of your hand, taking a chance, all about risk, aviation, aeronautics, aerospace, everything you guys do, frankly, every day. Funny bone, sense of humor, backbone, a sense of courage. And a wishbone, a sense of idealism. Idealism means we believe in we instead of me. We're all fellow travelers on the spaceship Earth, right? I reflect back over my life and I've learned this. In life, there's givers and there's takers. The takers, they eat better. The givers, they sleep better. So hear me now, believe me later. You know, I like to say that. If you ain't giving, you ain't living. If you ain't giving, you ain't living, put it on my tombstone. That's my life. I'm just telling you folks, I got to figure it out. I'm older than most of you. I'm looking around the room here. I got that figured out. If you ain't giving, you ain't. The great paradox in life is the more you give, the more you have. I'm talking about in your community, in your church, in your synagogue, at your school, wherever. You know what I'm saying. Okay, I'm on the home stretch here. And um, I, got, I brought a compass from my desk. And the compass is, of course, my prop for uh, some other memory pegs. And uh, faith, family, and friends. Okay, I call it the Mike Turpin 4F Club. Not 4H, not FFA, like we have in rural Oklahoma here. But it's the Mike Turpin 4F Club, because I do teach a Sunday school class with Susan. It's, it's a rite of passage Sunday school class, the confirmation class. They're ninth and 10th graders. I talk to them about the 4Fs. And I always talk about faith, family, and friends. So on the home stretch here, I'll probably preach a little bit, not much. Faith, turn your theology into biography. Turn your theology into biography. Whatever your theological beliefs are, make them part of the biography of your own life. Character is destiny. I'm back to that again. I tell those young people, not just in Sunday school, live this the rest of your life. Turn your theology into biography. Your theological beliefs, they have to be part of the biography of the life that you're writing every day. And they come back years later and some of them say, I got it. I didn't get it then, but I got it now. Can't be a spiritual spectator. Whatever religion is, you gotta figure out yourself, but separate the ever fleeting from the everlasting. I do think it matters. Gotta be lit from within, folks. I'm raising three children, you understand? So, all this is easier said than done. You know that. Family, I've already told you about my family. Faith family, family, golly. What, what, what can matter more? Last night was my son's 27th birthday. And we're all sitting there. And my daughter's in OU Law School. The older son's in oil and gas. But the middle son just took a job as a history teacher at the school he grew up in. Teachers impact eternity. I'm so proud of him. So last night at his birthday dinner, we went around a big table about this size right here. And I had everybody at the table say, would you, t would you talk to Patrick about one teacher in your life that made a difference? And they all did. 
And I looked at my son and said, you're doing what we all should be doing, God's work. Maybe not for God's pay, but educators, educators. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so faith, family, friends. When I got beat for governor, a few good friends came walking in when everybody else was walking out. Yeah, that's what happened, but that's okay. Vic, you came walking in, and I appreciate that very much. So, folks, in closing, I pick up a book. Faith, family, friends. By the way, the great poet, Robert Frost, at his 80th birthday party, they said, what'd you learn in 80 years? He goes, three words, life goes on. <laughs> so I get beat for governor, and I realize life goes on. You turn the page, you write the next chapter, folks. You just got to keep going, right? All worked out okay. But faith, family, and friends. Hmm. Well, finally, somebody in the Sunday school class will raise their hands and say, whoa, 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 you said four. So this is how I got life figured out. And it's important. To support your faith, to take care of your family, and to have fun with your friends, you got to have money. <laughs> you got to make a living, for God's sake. So it's, right? I mean, come on, let's get basic. So it's all about faith, family, friends, and finances. <laughs> so that's life. I mean, I'm not trying to be profound here, but I think I got to figure it out. So, so on a Sunday afternoon, I'll sit there and go, faith. Got, we got, oh God, we got to raise some more money for our capital campaign at Westminster Presbyterian Church. I mean, my, my, my wheels are turning. Family, got to call Brother Frosty back because his son's, well, he, yeah. we got to get that expunged from his record, Vic. Yeah, and so, yeah. <laughs> Attorney client privilege, faith, family, friends. You think of your friend, Gordo. I called Gordo, said, how can I help you with that? Faith, family, friends, and finances. And I mean, I sit there and tick them off every Sunday afternoon about 3 o'clock in a balcony overlooking Crown Heights Park. I get very reflective and I think, how am I doing? That's my checklist, folks, right there. And how you balance faith, family, friends, and finances is the opportunity of life, the quandary of life, the challenge of life. My closer is from my own book that's not a bestseller. If you want to go on the Turpentine Facebook page and give me your name and address, I'll send you one for free. I got stacks of them. <laughs> Okay, 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 all right. The two, the two great... The two great pillars of Western civilization that made America the greatest country in the world are that tomorrow can be better than today and it's our personal obligation to make it so. All right? So my book closes with a vignette from Sandra Day O'Connor, who was on the court when I argued there. I've met her several times since then. And Sandra Day O'Connor says, the secret to happiness is three words. The secret to happiness is three words. Work that matters. Work that matters. And from all the 50 states you came from to Oklahoma City for this conference, I'm here to tell you, I congratulate you for doing work that matters. And let's all continue together to, as Werner von Braun would say, aim at the stars. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Work the battle. Thank you, folks.